Hi everyone, throughout our previous tutorials we have explained how to fly, shoot and maneuver, but we perhaps missed one important topic, the damage calculation model for aircraft in War Thunder. We did this on purpose, since the damage model in arcade plays a very minor role, because as long as you can hit a tail, wing or engine with sizable bursts, that's all that counts. The damage received becomes truly important in realistic and simulator modes. There, the damage directly affects how your aircraft flies and handles, which in turn can drastically affect your combat performance. Let's take a look at all the available types of damage that you can deal, which is shown in the lock window on the right side of the screen, plus review that damage when applied to your aircraft as well. Let's start with the engine. If you fire in an enemy and see a message saying that opponent has suffered engine damage, it means that his engine will soon stall and that enemy will be as good as dead. Even if he does not crash himself, he can be easily shot down by you or your allies. All you have to do is wait for his engine to stop and then attack him at your leisure. Any damage to an oil tank can be identified by an evident trail of thick black smoke. This might seem like a minor setback, but in reality this is a time bomb for any aircraft with such a condition. When all of the oil inevitably leaks through the hole in the oil tank, the temperature inside the tank will rise rapidly, while there is basically no effective way to cool it back down. This overheating will in turn stall the engine sooner or later. Some aircraft have very small or vulnerable oil tanks and if they're hit, the oil inside will deplete extremely fast, so if your plane is one of those, you best get back to the nearest airstrip as soon as you can. If the engine radiator is hit, the situation will be similar. A good indication that your radiator is damaged is light white smoke trail, which is clearly indicating that your engine will soon fail. Now, a damage to your fuel tank is not as critical as you might think, but only until all of your fuel runs out. A leaking fuel tank will be indicated by a gray smoke trail, and in turn, this leak can range from a minor to a very severe leak. As you've probably guessed, once your tank goes dry, your engine will stop. Not to mention that a leaking fuel tank drastically increases the chance of your aircraft catching on fire in mid-air. Do not ignore direct damage to your engine as well. This is indicated when the engine icon of your plane goes pink, if this happens, you should immediately disengage from combat and fly back to your airfield, because if your damaged pink engine goes to red, or even worse, to black, you can consider yourself as good as crashed. Some engines have a float-fit carburetor, which is a special quirk to it. If you put an aircraft with such a carburetor in a sharp climb, you risk stalling the engine due to a float-feed carburetor failure. This is not lethal, however. You can restart your engine with an I-key, which you could have to press several times until the engine starts again. Now, let's talk about aerodynamics and steering. I bet that every pilot had at least once suffered a damage to one of his landing gear struts. This is perhaps one of the minor types of damage that you can sustain in battle, which does not in any way affect your combat performance, but you risk breaking the damaged landing gear strut during a landing. Sometimes the strut can fall off altogether before you even touch the ground, which, while nasty, does not prevent you from attempting to do an emergency landing on the belly of your aircraft which, if done right, can be quite soft and without major damage to your plane. It is a whole different story if you manage to damage the enemy's controls of his aircraft, for example, a rudder or an elevator. This can lead to severe limitations in control over these crucial aircraft parts, or even a total loss of control over them. There is even a critical status indicating that all of the enemy's tail controls are out, but don't confuse that with tail damage, which means that the tail fuselage surface is damaged. Now, you just have to wait for the enemy to lose control over his tail and let him go. Very few can make it back to the airfield using just their ailerons and flaps, while even fewer will manage to land with such lethal damage. The same goes for the wings. The damage to wings could prove just as fatal as a broken aileron, and you can use that to your advantage. If you manage to take out your enemy's left aileron, you can lead them right in combat maneuvers. Trust me, even the most maneuverable plane will never catch up with you with a broken aileron. Sometimes a sizable chunk of your wing can be shot off entirely, but some aircraft can fly even after suffering such grave damage. Certain planes were designed to survive such a failure, in fact, such as the American TBF. But if your aircraft lost a part of the wing and you still haven't hit the ground, you should immediately fall back to your airfield until the rest of your fuselage joins the lost portion of your wing on the ground. By the way, the aircraft can be x-rayed now, just as the tanks in ground warfare. You just have to assign a key and you will be able to check your aircraft's modules in real time in closer detail than provided by our aircraft status icon. 
Okay, now we will tell you a secret that can increase your survivability. That secret is manual control of the engine. This is a rather advanced technique that does not provide any evident benefits over your enemy in actual combat. But it can save your life in case your engine is damaged or overheated and you must return back to your base or simply stay aloft. Start with setting up the controls. Enter the controls menu and click on full reel controls and then select engine control. There you will need to assign a key to engine controls mode. We highly recommend using one of the numpad keys such as 5. Now we will need to set up the propeller pitch and radiator. Make sure that you use relative control to regulate the percentages. After that you will need to switch back to mouse aim. Ok, now you can return to battle. If your engine is shot through and you need to crawl back to the base, you should enable the manual engine control, then open the radiator to 100%, drop the thrust to 70% and set the propeller pitch somewhere in between 65 to 80%. This will help you compensate for the decreased engine thrust at lower altitudes with increased propeller pitch. Propeller pitch basically controls how fast a propeller spins, you can compare it to bicycle gears. So a propeller pitch set to 0 is like a lowest gear in a bicycle, but a propeller pitch at 100 is the highest possible bicycle gear, for example. So a gradual decrease of propeller pitch along the lowering engine thrust will help you negate some of the energy lost and maintain a decent speed while cooling down your engine at the same time. Well, this is it about damage for today. Play well, play fair and try not to get hit, okay? War Thunder Tutorials, signing out.